a magnificent today of the biblical truth of our hymns. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, Isaac Watts. And we can just spend a couple days when we go over this hymn with the scriptural references that we will find. And I, I'm not going to do this hymn in, uh, in its fullness. Because it would take multiple, multiple studies with this hymn and the Bible verses that are found in it. I hope I do some justice to it for such a great hymn. Now let me read, well, let's start off first of all, the United Methodist Hymnal deletes the second stanza. Thy body slain, sweet Jesus thine, and bathe in its own blood, while the firm mark of wrath divine in soul anguish stood. I feel a sneeze covered. Ouch! Forgive me. So, and what they put, it, you know, it's confusing. It ain't confusing to me. Uh, and, you know, people got to correct things. And then it says that people of great degree have problem with the fourth stanza. Well, might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in when God the mighty maker died for man the creature sin. And the problem is when Christ the mighty maker died. Well, they say, you know, God died. Are you Jehovah Witness? Because the Jehovah Witnesses have a problem with God being Jesus and Jesus being God. What's wrong with the Methodist Church? When they got a problem with says God the mighty maker died, there's no problem. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. You got too much education in your head and not enough God in your heart. And this one, the original first stanza, it, it can't be digested by the modern people today in churches. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Savior die? Would he devote that sacred head for such as a worm as I? That's because probably the modern churches today, the modern Christians aren't saved and have no love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it's to Psalms 22, verse 6. And again, we can't get to all the scripture reference, but I am a worm. Are you offended to say that I am a worm? Jesus said in hell with those that are unsaved where the worm dieth not. You get a new body in hell. It's for, it's a worm. You get a new body in glory that looks like Jesus Christ. So it's one of these passionate hymns about Jesus Christ suffering and dying for us. And what a wonderful hymn it is. What a wonderful hymn. And when we look at this hymn, we're going to do that right now. <laughs> says, alas, explanation, alas, and did my Savior bleed? Now the title is a question mark. Kind of interesting. And did my Savior bleed? Comma. Yes, he did bleed. Capital S. There's no other Savior but God, Jesus Christ. This is not a hymn that can be sung by the Jehovah Witnesses. And I guess the Methodists have a problem with it now. And did my sovereign die? God. Yes, God died. God gave up his life. God said it is finished. God, who is 100% Jesus, Jesus, 100% God, and 100% man, lived and breathed on this earth, slept, got angry, Felt, touch, cried. Would he devote that sacred head, that glorious head, that, that wonderful head of holiness? And he didn't have a halo around it. He didn't have a light around it. How come in the Bible there were people that went up and said, who are you? Who's that man? If he had a halo around his head, they would know who he was. He'd be the only one with his 12 disciples with halo. Yet there are people in the Gospels who 
Who was that? Who is he? Kind of foolish. Sacred head. Sacred head. God. I said this is not a Jehovah Witness hymn. God manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ. This is not a Catholic hymn. Because God is the Pope. God is Mary. I mean, after all, you go through Mary as a mediator. That makes her God. God is. I go through Jesus Christ. I get to God through Jesus Christ. And not only do I get to God through Jesus Christ, but I come to God, Jesus Christ. And that glorious head came down with a crown of thorns. For sinners such as I. I would think they would have a problem with that one in the modern church today. Who would announce that they're sinners? Who would announce that I have fallen? You, you deal with people in a public ministry. I, 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 I never killed anybody. I didn't murder anybody. I'm a good person. Isaac Watts. The date here is 1707. 2019, 2018 going to 2020 soon people don't think they're sinners they don't think there's nothing wrong with them and the modern church can't let me ask you this hymn we're only in the first stanza when was the last time your church sang this one when was the last time your church sung a stupid hymn when was the last time your church sung a hymn that we said should not be sung in the church how about it got a problem maybe the Methodist Church has a problem with this hymn. Modern people have problems. I'm a sinner. No, you're not. I'm not a sinner. I didn't do nothing wrong. I am a sinner. And it's for my sins that God, Jesus Christ, died on that cross. Isaac Walk says, I am a sinner, such as I. The body slain, beaten, bruised, beard pulled, cat of nine tail, being punched. The thorns upon his brow the nails in his hands the bible says his back was described as a plowman plowing the fields the bible says they pulled his beard the bible says when they stood before the sanhedrin they put a shroud over his head and they punched him and then the the soldiers who were not meek men you would call them the seals the the, the aggressive military team that we have in the united states of of the roman soldiers and they beat him was it slapping wasn't tapping. It was God's wrath poured out upon Jesus Christ of, of the creation that God made it. Sweet Jesus. That's an old sweet name Southern women have, colored women. Sweet Jesus. My sweet Jesus. Sweet. He don't give you diabetes, but man, he sure takes care of you and loves you. He's also a salty Jesus. He's also a spicy Jesus. He's also a hot jalapeno Jesus. He's also a, a pepper Jesus. He's he's a he's a, a man of all the ingredients of a kitchen. Where everything makes a stew great. Where everything makes a meal great. He is the bread. He is the water. He is the meat. He is the milk. He is all. Today's modern church is all sugar. It's all corn syrup. It's all artificial ingredients. It's all scientific ingredients, which is unhealthy for the body. Jesus, he has the spices. He has all that will be. It's all natural. If you were to look at the ingredients of Jesus, all natural, 100% God, 100% man. No sin. You look at the ingredients of the church today, the modern church, sugar, salt, Everybody rock debate. Monosaka rock the world. But Bill can't pronounce the words true. Red dye number five instead of the blood. Dine and bathe in its own blood. Acts 20 28 says, The blood of God, which he purchased the church. I guess. Churches that believe in baptism can't sing this hymn because they will say, bathed in his own water. It doesn't say water. Salvation is a bloody means of you to be get right with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. When they pierced his side, blood and water came out. When they 
pierced his nail, his hands and his feet, blood came out. When they put those thorns upon his his brow, the blood came out. When they whipped him, when they beat him, the blood came out. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Not water. Not water. And the Catholic wasn't there to hold up a cup to get the blood and start drinking it. That's a violation before the law, that's a violation during the law, and that's a violation after the law of eating and drinking of blood. It's forbidden by the Bible. No Catholic sat there getting a drink full of Jesus' blood. It wouldn't have done them any good anyway. The flesh and blood profited not. John chapter 6. Like I said, we can just go, go and go and make this a study and look at the scriptures. While the firm mark of grace unknown you know when they beat jesus you know when they tortured jesus you know when they nailed jesus you know when they say crucify him crucify him you know when they rejected they wagged their head and they're and they're betting his clothes away and they're just ha 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 you be let's see god come down and get you let's see if uh, uh if elijah's will come and get him you know they didn't realize who that was they didn't realize that was God manifested in the flesh. They didn't realize that was God. They didn't realize that that was their Messiah. They re totally rejected him. Even 11 of his apostles rejected him. Judas went off and hanged himself after he sold him out. Peter went off angry and, and cussing and, and crying in tears. And John stayed by his side. Bathed in blood while the firm mark of, re of oh, wait a minute, I, I, excuse me, I, I did that wrong. I got mixed up here. While the firm mark of wrath divine, excuse me, I apologize. The wrath of divine. Isaiah 53 says it pleased God to, to put all that upon Jesus because of our iniquity. It was a pleasure for God. That all the pain, sorrow, suffering, brutality upon Jesus. Listen, it's what I'm supposed to get. The sufferings were supposed to be me in hell burning forever. And when people say, God loves me, and you're not saved. Look what they've done to Jesus. For God to accept the penalty and the payment and the pardon of sin, he beat the daylights out of Jesus. God, divine. God beat God on that cross. God beat God before Pilate. God beat God in front of the Sanhedrin. God manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ. John the Baptist says, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And those that reject Jesus Christ, the wrath is hell. It is the lake of fire to follow. Those that are saved, I don't go to hell. I don't go to the lake of fire. Because all that wrath of sin that I have done since I have been born was put upon Jesus Christ from the meaning of the Sanhedrin to the death. It is finished. His soul, Jesus' soul, he had a soul, in anguish stood. They showed him no mercy. I thirst, and they brought him vinegar. They didn't let up on him. God would not allow it. The merciful one that suffered and died for me had no mercy. David says, let me fall in the hands of a man, for the Lord is merciful, the Lord is gracious, the Lord is right. Let me not fall in the hands of man. My wife's in the hospital, and I say, Lord God, you take care of her, not man. Man don't know what he's doing. Man don't care. They don't love my wife in the hospital. I love my wife in the hospital. The Lord loves my wife. Was it for crimes that I have done? Oh, yes. You know, I don't know how many sins there are in the world, but I created a lot of them in my own life. I've done most of them, probably. You murder somebody? I thought about it. Does not the Bible say if you hate someone, you're a murderer? You committed adultery? I thought about a woman with lust. 
You don't realize we're guilty not just by action. We're not guilty with our hands. We're not guilty with our feet. We're not guilty with our physical body. We're guilty also by our thoughts and the intents of our heart. How guilty are you when God will weigh, let weigh out what you thought rather than what you did? First commandment, God's first all the time. I haven't done that. I haven't done that. Many of my crimes, many of my sins are under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are sins you don't need to know, but I do daily. Because I want to do them and because it seems to be in my, my sinful nature that I am. That I need not to do. But I'm a sinner. And it's me because Jesus Christ went to that cross. It is you because you're a sinner. He groaned upon that tree. You know, in the garden, they say, oh, he didn't want to die. He pleaded to God because of the death of the cross. He, no, no, he, he, he did not want to take that cup. The agony, the wrath of God of that cup of sin, Jesus come to the, oh, that's, God had once felt the wrath of him upon a sinner. And when he suffered and died on that cross, 99% of the people that were present at that cross rejected him, rejected him, and don't come to me and say, oh, if I was there at the cross, I would have received him, I would have been on his... Stop singing those stupid songs. Because you have been there with a the crowd, ranking on him with the crowd. Because guess what? When he died on that cross, he wasn't your savior yet. He had to come out of that tomb three days later. Amazing pity. For me, not for Jesus. God let Jesus have it for my sins. And when I come to Jesus Christ as my Savior, God does not let me have it for my sins. He shows me mercy. He, he shows me grace. He gives me eternal life. He gives me promises. He gives me the Holy Spirit. He gives me love, joy, peace. He gives me eternal home. He gives me New Jerusalem. He builds for me a mansion. If I do what he tells me to do, he'll provide me a crown. He'll have me, if I had to do what I'm supposed to do, an inheritance in the millennium. He has a place called New Jerusalem forever to be before his throne. I don't deserve that. At any moment, Jesus said, Father, while, while on this planet for 33 and a half years, at this moment, he said, Father, put me back in heaven. I'm not going to do it. Jesus was stupid, righteous, and holy. Grace unknown. I already said, I accidentally I got ahead of myself. Who knew about grace? The apostle John was there with, with Mary, Jesus' mother. And John, come up to me for a minute. What do you think grace is? Wasn't known yet. That the suffering, bleeding Messiah, the suffering, bleeding Savior of man and his sins, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Grace for me. I don't deserve that grace. And my grace is because I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and love beyond degree. I talked about, you go back, uh, a title, love. What love is and what love isn't. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That Jesus loved us that he suffered and died. The Holy Spirit comes into us and puts love in our heart. It is a fruit of the spirit of God, love. You miserable, wicked, vile sinner that is an enemy to my holiness. You believe on my son, I'll give you eternal life. That's love. Satan has no love. Satan can't show love. That's not an attribute. God is love. And what greater love does he have for his creation? He laid down his life. God laid down his life. Jehovah Witnesses, you're wrong. Catholics, you're wrong. Methodists, you're wrong. By the blood of Jesus Christ, who is God. Love beyond degree.
in churches today they they got this 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 worldly whoppy kind of ooshy kind of lovely songs and all that that ain't about the love of god you can take that that those words and you can put your girlfriend's name on it you can put your boyfriend's name on it and you can sign it and they wouldn't even know it, it was a i'm not even a, 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 a hymn of the modern church We've done a few of those in this study. Well, might the sun in darkness hide? There was darkness. I believe it was three hours. Heaven shut up. Holy, shut up. My wrath is being poured out upon my son. Shut up and turn off the lights. Wasn't even a cricket heard. Wasn't even a star shining. As God turned out the lights and turned heaven around, he fulfilled his wrath upon Jesus Christ. And you think your beads, you think your church attendance, you think your water, you think whatever you think besides the blood of Jesus Christ is going to appease God, you are foolish. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. In Egypt, it got dark. No one could see. No one would even move. I believe there's a time in the tribulation period come. It's going to be darkness. I think. And shut his glories in. That's heaven. Has ever heaven been shut, closed? Yes. When Jesus Christ was on that tree, on that cross, and God poured out his wrath upon his son. When God, the mighty maker, oh, Isaac Watts believes in creation. One of those dopey, popey, dopeys, stupid pope. There you go. It says stupid today. Genesis is a myth. You tell that to God when you stand at the great white throne judgment. You walk up to God and say, God, you and your Bible are alive. What am I going to do when I walk up to God? Thank you, God, for making me. Not only, God, thank you for making me as wonderfully and fearfully made, but thank you, Lord God, you laid your life down for me. God, not only are you my creator, but you're my savior. You can't have salvation of God if you don't believe that God made it. Monkey men have no saviors. They're too busy trying to get the bugs off them and eat them. They're too busy trying to fight for that last banana in the tree. Christ, God, the maker, died for all... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. In glories, when God, the mighty maker, died for all... Isaac Watts was not a Jehovah Witness. Look, 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 look. When God, the mighty maker, the creator, died for... He says God died on that cross. You want to throw the the, the, the whoop and what, the Jehovah Witness meaning, whatever they call it, say right in the middle of their meeting, hi, I'd like to suggest to him, yes, alas, did my Savior believe. That would break all their faucets. That would break all their fuses. They would just go in a complete controversy, go spiritual mad, because God is the one that died on that cross. It is God's blood that has been spilled for man. God, God, the mighty maker, creator, died for all creation sin. So what's the Bible say? Going all the world and preach the Preach the gospel to every creature. Mark chapter 16. Go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every man and every woman. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about God. Don't come knocking on the doors without God, who's Jesus. Come to their doors. Come to where they meet. Come to the places they do visit. Go where you can and bring Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. Make sure he's God. Paul warns there's another Jesus out there. There's a religious Jesus, and then there's the godly Jesus. This my I hide my face in shame. 
There was two men the Bible speaks about. One man, he, he's kneeling at the altar. God, I thank God I'm not this. And I thank God I'm so great and wonderful. And you're just so happy for me to be here. I'm not as wicked as this man over here. God, thank you. And there's people that go to church like that. There are, there are people who go to church and think God is so happy. And the one right next to him, he wouldn't even lift his head up. He says, Lord, God, beat in his chest. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, that man went in the glory of God. You can't approach to God and say, how great I am. No, you got to come to God with the other hymn, how great thou art. God don't take how great I am as man. God takes how great thou art, the man, Christ Jesus. His dear cross appears to dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt my eyes to tears. When you think about the cross, it doesn't bring you to tears at what Christ had to suffer for us. It does for me. When you come to this realization of how much Christ was abused, how much Christ was tortured, how much Christ suffered because of me. Let me give you an illustration that can't even match, but I need an illustration here. All right. You got men on the battlefield. And uh, the enemy throws a grenade. The friend next to you jumps on that grenade, protects you, and he survives. And he's off at the, at the military hospital. Go see his bedside, see how much he's suffering because of you. That you're standing, you're looking at him, you've got all your body parts. And I'm not... I'm not referencing that to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, but I'm saying suffering. And that grenade, what, what damage it did to that body, and the pain and agony that man survived, would not match the pain and agony of the wrath of God upon a sinner. There are times, not all the time, but when I think about the pains and struggles I'm going through, and when I'm in deep despair, I always try to think that there's someone somewhere in a hospital somewhere that has third degree burns over his body. And you say, well, why do you think that icky thing? Because there's someone suffering more than I am. Now there be, may be medication. I, I've heard, I, I've read some things about third degree burns and skin grafts and, and that's the most horrible thing I could think about. They say that giving birth is one of the greatest pains in the world. And up there, I, I don't know, I've never given birth. But would be a man that's lying in third degree burns uh, over 50% of his body. And yet Jesus Christ had the ultimate suffering. Jesus Christ suffered beyond all what man can suffer. And he had no morphine. He had no Tylenol. He had no aspirin. He had no IV bottles. He had no doctor. He had, they gave him vinegar. And what did I give him? I gave him 18 years of rejecting him. I gave him 18 years of turning my back on him. I gave him 18 years of other things. And then even when I got saved in 1987, a few years after that, I lived for a couple years in backsliding. I lived a couple of years in the world. Worthiness in mind. Faithfulness in Christ. Did we finish? In my eyes and tears. But drops of tears can never repay. Now think about that right now. David, I believe, is in the psalm, says, Thou hast put my tears in a bottle. I guess like there's so much scripture here. I could probably do a, a week's worth with this hymn and, and scripture. That goes against the Jehovah Witnesses. That truly can't be sung by a Catholic. And has no meaning to a Jehovah Witness. But think about the tears. 
How many oceans of tears could you cry for what Christ has done for you? And yet your tears will not pay for your sins. It was the blood of Jesus Christ. When would it be enough for the tears that we would have while we live in pleasure in the flesh while being saved? We may have tears for our loved one who's hurting. But honestly, seriously, when did you have tears because your Christ, your God, your Savior, your Creator suffered and died on that cross? When's the last time you had those tears? If God were to break out his bottles of your tears, tears of joy, how full would it be? Tears of agony and pain. Where would that bottle lie? How about the tears when you cried because of Calvary? If, if the bottles were labeled, or, and there's many ways you can cry. Crocodile tears. How many crocodile tears have you had compared to the tears of Calvary? Maybe David's right. Maybe there is a bottle of Bottles of tears that God is going to lay at the judgment. I don't know. Would it, what, if there was. Don't you know God our Savior cried? It is never recorded that God ever died to John 11.35. Jesus wept. And then he wept one other time. He wept over the city of Jerusalem. God cried. God never cried at the death of Abraham. He never wept over the death of Isaac. He didn't get a Kleenex when Jacob died. If our measure, and probably will be, if uh, the measure of our tears were to be put, I'm talking about for Christians, if the measure of our tears would be put down at the judgment seat of Christ, where would it lie? Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble? Could never repay the debt of love, I owe. We don't have a debt of sin. It's not after I die, because I was born into the Catholic religion. It's not after I die, someone's going to burn candles and pay money to a priest and pay money for prayers. That's not it. On April 25th, 1987, my debt of sin was paid by the precious blood of God upon Calvary's cross. I owe no debt of sin no more. I have been washed in the blood. But what about the debt of love? I'm going to pay for that debt of love. What? what? How much is that debt of love? I'm going to spend eternity praising and singing and glorifying Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit upon the throne in New Jerusalem. I'm going to spend time without time, no, no minutes, no seconds, no years, no dates, no calendar. For all eternity with no time, I am going to do the debt of love to the one that suffered and died for me. I'm going to be to the one that loved me. Bible says not that we loved him, but he first loved us, 1 John 4. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. And those that are saved, and those that have received Jesus Christ, we're going to spend all eternity, not a works, least any man, both. We're going to spend all eternity giving thanks to the love of Christ by our love. Drops of tears can never repay the debt of love. I owe. Let's go to another Bible verse. Revelation 22, after the, after the great white throne judgment, after the great white throne judgment of Re Revelation 20, Revelation 22, the Bible says, in all eyes, the tears shall be wiped away, right? Maybe 21, I believe it's 22. The tears of the eyes should be, we're going to have tears at the great white throne judgment as we watch loved ones and friends get cast off in the lake of fire because we would not do nothing or they would not do nothing. So when we go into eternity, into New Jerusalem, 
There are no more tears. They're gone. But drops of tears can never repay the debt of love I owe. So there will be no tears. There'll be joy, happiness, and glory. No more tear bottles. I'm told when you go through the stories of the Bible, and when Jesus came in the house, he had the mourners there crying. I was told that a Jewish thing was they had mourners that they paid. They were professional mourners to cry. There will be no professional tears in heaven, in New Jerusalem, in glory. They're wiped away. But all oh, the joy, the magnificence of the glory that we will give Jesus, who is still marred, who has the scars still, as we give thanks and love to him, and still, it's not enough. I'm going to be, I'm 50 years old right now, all right? I was saved in 1987, okay? So, and it's not a complete life. 32 years I've been saved. All those 32 years have not been completely right with the Lord, especially the first 18. First 18 years of my life, I was unsaved, never trusted Christ. April 25th to today, 32 years. And I'm going on to eternal life I'm to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to get a new body. Not by my merit, but by God, Jesus. You know, I have never spent my entire whole life to God. When I get the glory, I get the new body, and we get the sinless perfection, and we get to be before, okay, all eternity. If I were to die today at 50 years old, I've got 50 human years that I've never gave absolute, complete adoration to God and Jesus Christ. And 32 of them years I've been saved. 32 years that I should have, and I did not give it all to Jesus. I'm saying that for a purpose. Lord, I give myself to thee. It'd be pitiful in 32 years to know how much I really gave myself to God. It would be pitiful for me. Listen, you think high of yourself. I won't think high of myself. I think it'd be pitiful the day that God reveals if there are jars of tears. When he pulls off that tears of Calvary compared to the other tears. Now I give myself to thee. I'm a saved, born again, Bible believing Christian. I love the Bible. I study the Bible. I try to tell people. I fail telling people. I size people up. I don't carry tracks all the time like I'm supposed to. I've kept my mouth shut when I should have. I've opened my mouth when I shouldn't have. I give myself to thee. Can you imagine a church? I said that this won't probably be in a modern church at this hymn. And you probably haven't sung this hymn in your church in a long time either. Can you imagine a worldly Christian in the church service or an unsaved man that coming as a visitor? Can you imagine him having to say, okay, open your open your hymnals to the last and did my Savior bleed? Have a worldly Christian or unsaved man say, Lord, I gave myself to thee. What about, what a terrible, what a wicked spiritual slap on the back to them. What a wicked patting them on the back to have a worldly Christian or unsaved person sing. I would tell, if I was a song leader at the pastor of the church and I said, church, we're going to sing this. I would say, I am going to address those Christians that don't do what God tells them to do. That would be 100% of the Christians in the church. And those that try and those that are, are, are trying to seek God's pleasure by obeying the words and the commandments of Jesus Christ and God, your heart is set to God. Sing it out. But be warned of what the words you are saying. And be willing to give God more. 
to you worldly Christians in this congregation. I don't know why you're here. I don't know to what purpose. But your heart is not truly here. It's somewhere else. I ask you, as you go with the tone and the tune of this hymn, kind of sing and read the words and put them into your heart. To you who are visitors here, you've never been here before, or you've been here and you're not saved, and you're not a child of God. I ask you not to sing this hymn with the congregation. I ask you to read the words as this being sung. And I would ask you to put into your heart the words of this hymn to know that Jesus Christ suffered and died for you. And you're not living right with God today without Jesus Christ. You're not a child of God without Jesus Christ. And you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at these words. As the congregation sings. And ask your heart, are you right with God? Because when we get down to the sixth stanza and say, I gave myself to thee. Don't you dare as a worldly Christian in this congregation, don't you dare as an unsaved man in this congregation sing those, hurt, those, those words with an upbeat, prideful heart. You'll stand before God as a liar. And I'm not mocking to him. Debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself to thee. Tis all that I can do. Give yourself to thee. Oh, the preacher's go, going overtime. Can't wait to get out of church and go. You got your mind on other things? You haven't given yourself to God. You're giving yourself to you. You fumbling around with your phone during the service, playing a game, texting, looking at your Facebooks. Whatever you're doing with that phone, that so smartphone that makes you a fool before God, I've seen it. You haven't given yourself to the Lord. How do you make notes on your electronic Bible? How do you mark the Word of God with your electronic Bible? Maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe you can. I don't know. Alas, did my Savior bleed. What a wonderful hymn. What a glorious hymn. I don't want to play favoritism. I, I've got hymns I like. We haven't done, I don't think we've done any of them yet. But I would put this one, the first one, in the hymnal. I have plans, if the Lord will give me a church, I'm going to make my own church hymnal. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of the garbage and keep that which is pure. I'm going to keep the gold, silver, and the precious stone. This would be one of the first pages. When was the last time your church, whatever denomination, alas, and did my Savior bleed? Go up to your song later. Say, song there, and we sing, alas, and did my Savior bleed. I hope he says okay. If he don't, ooh. remember, put my tears in the bottle. I, I'm not saying I am not saying scripturally God is, but what if he is? What if he's just writing down? The measurements of our tears. God's a great recorder. Numbers, Leviticus, Chronicles. We're all going to be judged one day, saved or lost. If Jesus said, every idle word that shall be spoken, man shall give an account thereof. What about our tears? What about our tears? 